Hello, my name is Dan Fashionbauer. Have you heard of AI? Of course you have. It's everywhere in the news and media. Whether you like it or hate it, it's going to be part of your world in the future. So you better embrace it. My business acquaintance, Mike Filsain, will provide a demo of his new product called Groove.ai, which makes it extremely easy to use AI. Take it away, Mike. What I'm about to sh show you is absolutely mind-blowing stuff. If you thought Groove.ai projects were cool, wait till you see what we're doing here. So what I'm going to do um, while this is on, I believe I'm you're seeing my face as well. I'm going to talk to you about what these are, these 30 assistants and GPTs. And we're going to go, we're going to take a little bit of a, of a, um, a recap of what actually happened last year and what's coming next year. So last year, November, I think 30th, chat GPT came out and it revolutionized the world. We're not going to, you know, basically we all know we're not doing webinars like we used to, right? This is a large language model. It's basically changed the world. I like to call it a calculator for words. So, um, it woke up the world, woke up developers like us to see what we could do with it. We said, we're not just going to create this little thing that, you know, we add into just groove.cm. Like we're going to create a, a platform that rivals anything out there. We're going to create something better than Jasper. And so <clears throat> the first part about, uh, and I, I'm sorry, my stuff knows it's just making it. But anyway, um, the first thing that we got with chat GPT or the large language model was chat GPT. And so let's first talk about that. And now we're going to talk about the next step that they are and what's coming next year. So chat GPT is, is essentially um, as smart as any human. By the time in two months, chat GPT 4.5 comes out, it will be smarter than every human that's ever existed in every domain, period, the end, uh, certainly on average. Um, and so right now it's pretty close to that. So, but the only thing is people say, do we have to worry about this type of AI? No, it's a dormant AI. It's not what we would refer to as an agent. And the reason why we call these things like agents in AI, look at the matrix, Agent Smith, right? Agents have autonomy. They are given a role and they go out and execute it um, unwatched and unmanned, and they can go rogue, right? ChatGPT Chat does not have that ability. It's not tied into any ecosystem. So not necessarily can search the web. Some people created plugins, but basically what it is, it's a sleeping giant. So what I want you to picture is two things in your mind, Jack and the Beanstalk. So the, the giant and Jack and the Beanstalk and turn that giant into Albert Einstein. That's what ChatGPT was for the last year. It's sleeping. It's minding its own business. It's not thinking, it doesn't have a consciousness, it's not plotting, it doesn't have any goals, wants, or desires. It simply has world knowledge. And then you come up to it and you say something like, who was Ben Franklin? And when I hit enter, it's like waking up that giant. Be concise because I don't want a long answer. And that giant Albert Einstein wakes up, answers your question, and goes back to sleep. Welcome to 2023. Well, at the end of 2023, November, ChatGPT or OpenAI created for both us developers and for users in ChatGPT something called assistance or GPT. So I want to give them four different names. They could, I'll, I or me or anybody else will refer to them as GPTs, assistants, apps, or agents. All four of those things are the same. And so what's the difference between ChatGPT and a GPT assistant? Well, as you can see here, I've created 36 different specific agents. Now, these things don't use the old school custom instruction system prompt where if you say to put an output in a blog post, everything is in a blog post. <coughs> Unlike those, if here's one that's, I created just as a joke here called Shark Tank Pitch. What this does is it asks you to upload a document and then it writes your pitch for Shark Tank. So let's just go in to edit this and you'll see here. When I click the configure tab, just like that chat, chat bot that I showed you earlier, I could give this a role. 
your role is to so I'm basically adding a skin or a personality around ChatGPT, and that's why ChatGPT calls these GPTs. And you'll notice here that when you click Explore, they've given you their own GPTs, and here's recently used by me, and you can actually come in and create your own GPT. Let's take a look at this one right here, Jeopardy. This is the very first one I ever made. Start a new Jeopardy game. So I can put, uh, draw me the board. Whoops, <laughs> typo. And so here's what it's doing. It's drawing the board here for me. Um, it actually got it wrong. It's supposed to put the ca uh, categories across the top, cat across top. It's the first time I've ever seen it that done that way. <coughs> Well, this one is definitely out of its mind. But anyway, uh, I'm just going to put uh, world capital for 100. Normally, it, it, it draws the categories across the top, and it still didn't even do that. Um, so answer, the city, this city is the capital of Japan and the most populous metropolitan area in the world. What is Tokyo? And if I just said Tokyo, it would have said, sorry, wrong. You didn't phrase it in the form of a question. So I put that there. It's going to tell me, great. You've earned 100. Your current score is 100. Please select from the board. And I can say draw board, et cetera, et cetera. So what is this right here? If I click edit GPT and I click configure, you will see um, that I said what it is. I said I want you to act like Alex Trebek, et cetera, et cetera. When the person says draw the board, draw it in a grid, blah, 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 blah. And it creates a game. I said make it one round with double jeopardy and all that different type of stuff. Once I saw that I can do this, I realized this is like natural language programming. So – Let's create a GPT, and I'm going to create one right here. Um, so I'm just simply going to say, um, make me a headline generator. Uh, the user will paste or upload their copy, and you will give a headline. Now, I've created one of these that has tons of instructions that says model this person, use um, these 10 different frameworks. And I gave it 10 different frameworks. And I said, so your output must include 10 different headlines, but also include a pre-headline and a sub-headline. But we're just going to create a simple GPT right now to give you an example. So the first thing it's going to do is it's going to come up with a name. And I'm just going to say, yeah, that's a good name. Yes. Uh, it called this headline wizard. It? Great. Now it's going to come up with an image for the headline. <clears throat> All right. Watching paint dry sometimes with these things, but I just want to basically show you. So I don't like that one, but that's fine. We're going to keep that. That's our headline creator. And so now it's going to ask me like five more questions. Like, should it be friendly or professional? So I usually just go, I will take it from here. And now I can go into this configure tag if I want, but I don't have to. And I can see what it came up with. And this is where I spend a lot of time. It takes me about two to three hours myself to fine tune these things because I create some kick ass friggin' GPTs. Wait till you see what, what we have in store for you in the next 45 minutes, guys. It's going to blow your friggin' mind. All right. So basically, um, it writes four different starters. I don't like to all have too many, so I'll usually get rid of them. So there's just, you know, create a headline for the sales copy I'll put, right? And then here, I can upload knowledge. I can train it on what makes a good headline. I don't need web browsing. We don't need Dolly images. And here, this is really advanced stuff. We can create actions and we can uh, put a Zapier URL or a WhatsApp URL. We can... Um, uh, authenticate with login to other applications. We can even uh, paste in code in here to let it follow. So it gives us examples to show us how that's going to work. Um, so you can basically program these things to work with you know anything out there. Uh, I'm going to just um, delete this because we don't need that part of it. And I'm going to save this GPT 
And I'm not going to share it. I'm going to say only with me because I'm going to delete it later. We're going to save it. And now it's actually going to go from draft mode to done. And so let's just upload some sales copy. So we're going to go into Dropbox here. Um, here is some sales copy from John Carlton. So I'm just going to upload that. And we're going to go. And I want to show you that I've now created a GPT that has a specific role. All right. So it's searching that that information. And here it goes. It's giving me uh, 10 different headlines that it thinks would be good for that sales copy. All right. So I'm actually going to go into here. And um, what I want to do, I want to show you that I can pin this to my sidebar here. So as you can see, it's going to be down here. Right. I can unpin it and hide it from my sidebar, and I can also click edit. And then when I edit, I can share this with anyone that has the link or make it public in a marketplace that they have coming soon. So this is going to be the new marketplace. You're going to be seeing a lot of people selling GPTs. Okay. Um, so by doing that, I can click copy link and I can share this with anyone. Okay. But I'm going to click delete this GPT. We don't need it because I have these GPTs here that I'm going to be going over with you. All right. Failed to delete. I'm sure it deleted it. It's, uh, let's see if I it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's gone. It deleted. It. All right. So I have these GPTs that I'm going to demonstrate here for you. But before we do that, I promise you that I told you that this is phase two and what's coming out next in phase three is what's going to be known as the autonomous agents. We are creating agents that have specific tasks. Soon, you're going to have what's known as the CEO agent. And the CEO agent is going to be kind of like your project manager. Whether you're developing software or you're creating a blog post that needs to be posted, and then you check the analytics and you split test different um, titles to see which one got better clicks, you're going to have a CEO GPT that will manage all of these GPTs and other GPTs that other people use. And you will say something like, I want you to create um, uh, the best blog post on personal development. I want two to go out uh, every single week on Monday and Friday to my blog and everything like that. It'll say, great. And it's going to spin off a keyword researching GPT. And then it's going to come up with the, um, the writer GPT. Then there's going to be the editor that looks at it for grammar and kicks it back or just fix the grammar. Then you're going to have the FTC GPT because you're in health and wellness and the chat GPT wrote a health claim and said that using ginkgo biloba can cure this. Well, actually you can't make that claim. So the FTC um, GPT is going to kick that back and say, Hey, maybe you shouldn't make this claim. And then it's going to go to another GPT that's going to analyze it for uh, what is going to be the best keywords to put for the blog, the best preview snippet, the best blog title, and 10 blog titles to split test. And then that's going to go to the poster GPT that has access to your WordPress account. It's going to post it, and it's going to report back to you. The, the reporting analytics person is going to – GPT will report back to you with analytics and tell you – tell the team, these blog posts didn't work, these work write more like these, et cetera, et cetera. So that's what's coming in 2024. Sam Altman already teased on that. This is where we're going to be going full autonomous GPTs. So jobs will be going away. And what we're going to be doing is we will all become managers of GPTs, GPT programmers, GPT developers. The programming world is still going to need engineers, but it's going to shift to people that basically get in these Iron Man suits and manage these GPTs. And we're going to see an incredible increase in productivity. So what I'm showing you today are about 36 that we've created. And I'm going to start showing you them right now. So the most important thing that I want you to know why my GPTs work better than anybody else's out there is almost every single one of these requires that you have our 30 uh, questions answered and stored on your computer. And soon that's going to be stored inside of Groove.ai. And what I mean by that is we have a document that we ask you to fill out once that asks you 30 questions about your business. 
Like what challenges or pain points do your customers typically face? How does your company provide solutions to these challenges or pain points? What are your customers' most common objections, et cetera, et cetera? What are the features of your product? What's your unique selling position? What's your affiliate program? Who's your target audience? And once we have that, you will take a look. I have one for Groove Agency. What motivated me to start Groove Agency? What's the primary goal? Et cetera, et cetera. Uh, let me just see here. Um, what qualities? Um, ooh, this is actually short. <coughs> this is not the proper 30 questions. Let me, uh, let me just open that in full. Maybe that's the problem. It was a preview document. Yeah. So bear with me just a second. I want to just put the right information there. So I'm going to just look up my actual 30 questions for Groove Agency. Groove Agency 30 questions. Yeah, there we go. This is the, this is the correct one. So I'm going to copy that. Let me open this. I must have overwritten this uh, prior and I'm just going to paste my 30 questions. So now we got everything that we need to know about Groove Agency here. All right. So now that we have that, and I'm going to show you that it's going to ask you every time you go to run these. Now, I've created these GPTs to currently work with your chat GPT plus. Just so you know, this was all done so that I could run them and test them and put them here into uh, OpenAI in our platform. And they're going to be transposed and they're going to be native apps for Groove.ai. And then these GPTs will disappear. So as you can see, here's one storyboard artist. I tested it. I put everything in here. And when I was done, I clicked the test, I ran the test, and it runs identical. And so now my team is transposing all of these apps that will actually just work natively right here inside of Groove.ai instead of going into ChatGPT. But all of my members of Groove.ai get all 30 of these GPTs. So let's take a look. Let's start with Brand Site Architect. We'll click on this one. And we're going to say, create my brand site for me. So these are things that we use inside of Groove Agency. So you're going to notice the first thing it's telling us is uh, please upload your brand intake form. If you haven't done it, you can do so here. And it goes to that 30 questions. So you will save that as a text file. Since I already have that, I'm simply going to just simply upload my 30 questions from ChatGPT. There they are. I'm going to upload that and I'm going to hit Go. And so now this GPT's job is to tell me first, what are the actual pages that are needed for my website? So there you go. I need a homepage and about us page of services. And when it's done, it's going to say, do you want to build the homepage now? And I'm going to say, yes, let's create the homepage. See, are you ready to build the homepage? All I have to do is say yes. So I don't need to know any prompts. I'm simply just going to follow along and give it anything that it asks. And now that it knows the 30 questions about my business, the GPTs that I'm unleashing for you are going to be the most powerful game changers you've ever seen for your business. So here we go. Brandsite Architect is telling me that for my homepage, I need a hero section. I need a full width background image with a color overlay. Um, the uh, background image should be a high quality image representing Groove Agency's dynamic, blah, blah, blah. And it's going to give me the prompt for ChatGPT to create that. The color and the opacity should be deep blue at a 60% opacity. The sales copy on the page should be empowering digital, et cetera, et cetera. The call to, call to action button should be as follows. And there you go. It's created uh, every single thing that I need for each section of the page. Now, basically, uh, what I would do is I would simply go into, let's just go to mikefulsame.com and I'll just edit right into that, that site. And let's say I was going to be creating a new page like this. I'll just create a new page. Here we'll start from scratch and we're going to bring a block over and it said that we needed a header section. So we would basically just click on this one right here, import it. Okay. And we would look at our instructions. I believe that was here. So let's just get rid of all this other junk that we don't need. 
Okay. And so it says that we need deep blue 60% opacity. So I'm simply going to take this. We're going to make this blue and we're going to set the opacity to 60%. It's also telling me the image that I need. I'm not going to get into that right now. Next, it's telling me that this pre headline right here should say empowering your digital journey. So we're just going to go right to here. Select all, paste, powering your digital journey. Whoops. Next, let me move this over here so I can move back and forth easier. My headline would be this. We just paste that headline. Now we've got our headline. We've got our join the ranks right here. That would go here. All right. We don't need a video here, so we just get rid of this section. And it's telling us that the button for this should be a bright, look at that, a bright orange button, text in white. So that we got lucky already. I don't have to change that. And this should say discover our services. So I simply, um, let's actually just go exactly what they said. They said bright orange and discover our services. So we're going to update that and make this button actually more like a bright orange. There we go. All right. So there we go. Now I've created my first section there. <coughs> so sorry. <coughs> and then I go, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> then I go to my next section and basically it's telling me everything that I need. And when I'm done, it now says, are you ready to go on to your, uh, to your next page? And the next page would be the about us page, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the brand website uh, page <coughs> of GPT. I'm so sorry, guys. Let me get a little liquid here. <laughs> all right i can i can last i can last we're gonna be all right so let's now go back to the gpts and look at this one here called funnel wizard expert let's run that one and if i run too many of these chat gpt is going to tell me um hey you've used your tokens you know come back in two hours so i'm going to do it in the sandbox mode over here <laughs> So help me build my marketing funnel. Okay, great. Uh, first, I need to know a little bit about what you want to do, what type of funnel. So it's going to give me a list of funnels, or do I get a list of funnels with a description? Most likely you will say two, but I'm going to say one because I don't need a description. I know what all of these different types of funnels are. You would say two. It would give you a description so you could better decide what you want to do. <coughs> So it's giving me a list of funnels. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a live webinar funnel. Here we go. No, you know what? Let's just do uh, – do you see book? Let's look for the word book. All right. Let's do an ebook launch funnel. So I'm just going to paste that in there and answer the question. Great. All right. Now, how do you see your funnel flow going? Okay, and I'm going to just say I need a squeeze page. Um, with an upsell, no downsell, and a thank you page. All right, and it, you can even say what pages do I need, and it'll tell you, but I happen to know which ones I want, so... Let's just put that there. Okay, we're good. All right, it's being say, saying basically excellent. We'll create these uh, here for you. <coughs> Are you planning on offering a freemium? Um, we're going to say yes, a free report on how to use AI in your business for content creators now let's discuss uh, a video or webinar aspect of your funnel um, so we're going to say no video and if i had one i would put more information and knows how to what to do on the copy so basically it's basically saying okay here's what you need right here and then it's going to basically say all right let's design your squeeze page. Are you ready for the first page in the funnel? And now it's going to write 
everything that I need for the squeeze page. It's going to tell me the, the layout, the, the colors, the headlines, the bullet points, everything that's needed. We have a lot of these to go over, guys, and uh, I could spend 15 minutes on each one of these. Uh, but basically, this will this tells you everything that you need and how your page needs to be designed. These are some of the more complex ones. Let's get into some of the more fun ones here. All right. This one is called long form copy generator. Now, for the very first time, you will be able to write long form sales copy. Basically, I'm talking writing 10 page sales copy. This has never been possible before. ChatGPT just doesn't have the tokens to do that. Uh, it just didn't. It can't write more than a page worth of stuff. So what we're going to do is now we're going to look at how this actually happens. So help me create a long form sales letter or a VSL. Uh, let's, and these are two different ones. Let's create the VSL. So what do you think it's going to ask me? It's going to say, hey, I need to know a little bit about your business in order to help you. Can you fill out the brand intake form? And it's going to link me to that if I haven't done that. But I've already done that. And that's why this is so important. All of these apps will know everything about your business and write incredible copy. There's no other way to get this stuff out of ChatGPT. So we're just going to give it information about my business. And what it's going to do now is it's going to create an outline for us. Now, let's move on to the next section. Are you ready? Yes, we're ready. <clears throat> All right. So based on the information that I provided by answering the 30 questions, it's writing an outline. But here's what I want you to understand, that you can never do this with ChatGPT. It actually will have the context of all of this information. So first it writes the outline. And when it's done, it says, are you ready now to write the first section and it will go and it will write this, then it will write this, then it will write this. And you can see it's writing all of this information here, <laughs> all of this information. So even if I were to, while that's writing that, let me open up another one of these because there's a couple of things I want to show you here. This is the same one. I just want to go in and see, edit this GPT. I want to show you guys that I've uploaded knowledge to this. I've given an outline on what makes a perfect long form sales letter. I've given an outline on what makes a good VSL. And then when it comes to writing the offer, I've trained it on what makes a good offer. So it, it has, <clears throat> it has pre made knowledge that there's, if let me, let me see if I could actually find this on this computer. I might have done this on my laptop. So let me see if I have that here. No, I don't have that here. I was going to show you the actual thing that this is on my laptop, but this information that you're seeing right here is trained. This is what makes these GPTs different. It's actually following instructions that I gave it. So if we go back now, you're going to see here, it says continue generating. So you see, it doesn't even have enough context in its window to, to even just write the outline. So that's what, how could it ever write a long form sales letter when just the outline, it needed me to click continue. So now it's saying, are you ready for me to start creating the copy? So all I have to do is say yes. So watch what's going to happen. It's now going to take this right here and start right there. I don't have to tell it anything other than yes. <coughs> Great. I'll begin by the introduction. So now it's writing my sales, my VSL, my friggin' VSL for Groove Agency. Guys, even with ChatGPT before, even with Groove.ai before, this was difficult to write something this long. It would forget what it previously wrote. This is now following an outline and has pre-context of everything that's coming before and what's going next. Look at that, what I wrote just for, just for the introduction. So are you ready to continue? I, I'm just going to click, keep clicking yes. And the reason it's doing that, it's resetting, it's taking a rest. And it's using all of its token power to just write one bullet point of the outline. So this is called the problem identification, highlighting the problem. The struggle that connects us all. You know the feeling, right? And I could actually take this right now and literally put this right into 11 labs. And I can literally just pop this right in here just like this. 
and just click generate and use my voice that I've already trained it on. All right. So here we go. It's writing more copy. Are you ready for me to move forward? Yes. And so I just keep repeating this and repeating this and repeating this. And guys, I take all of this, paste it into Groove.ai's document editor and start start changing anything that I need if I feel. But never before has AI been able to write a long form sales letter. Guys, this is a friggin' game changer. Game, game, game changer. I wish I had more time. I could do an hour just on this, uh, but we don't have time. So we're going to move on. Let's look at what else you get that I've created. Offer Craftsman Pro. So the toughest part when you come to your webinar, your VSL or anything is actually writing the offer. Now, the best offer that's ever been created has been outlined. There's books about this. Ron Popeil was a master. If you look at what I did here, <coughs> I've actually transcribed and wrote the knowledge here and I created an outline and then the script. And this GPT's instructions, which I can't show you, it's proprietary. This GPT's instructions, and just for shits and giggles, I'll show you. You can screenshot it if you like, but I've got 36 of these, basically, guys, that have all of this information on how to do this type of stuff. I don't just, I, I, this is like writing computer programs for me. And I'm transposing, these are all available for Groove.ai members. So watch this. Create an offer for me based on my business. Great. I'd be happy. Can you tell me a little bit about your business? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put up, uh, <clears throat> let's see, this one right here. That's about Groove Agency. And now it's going to write the copy in the proper way. And if you remember, Ron Popeil with his old Showtime Rotisserie Gold, he would do a price anchor. And he would say something like, Okay, now you've probably seen luxury, expensive rotisserie selling in luxury magazines for $500, $1,000, or even $2,000 that don't even do half of what the Showtime rotisserie does. But you're not going to pay $2,000. You're not going to pay $500. You're not even going to pay $400. Not $350, not $325, not even $300 not even 250, et cetera, et cetera. So, and then you have the bonuses and then you have the guarantee. Then you have the risk reversal. Then you have the blah, 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 blah. So you simply tell it about your product and it writes this. Are you tired of spending exorbitant amounts of digital uh, on digital marketing website management? Groove Agency is here to change that. Unlike other services that can cost a staggering $350,000 per year, our comprehensive package is a game changer in the market. But wait, there's more, right? Ron Popeil. We're not just offering Groove Agency at this already amazing value. For a limited time, you can get our full suite of services for only $25,000 annually. Yes, you've heard that right. Just $25,000. And that's not all. We're making it even easier by offering you an option to split this annual cost into two easy payments of just $13,000. Plus, if you act now, will include these fantastic bonuses, exclusive access to blah, 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 blah. And then you would go in and fill this stuff out, but it's giving you the structure. Yes, it comes here. Testimonials go here. Your risk reversal. So don't wait. Reach out to us, blah, 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 your call to action. So this GPT writes the draft of your offer for your VSL, your webinar, or your sales letters. Moving on, because we've got more to go over. We've got Copy Polisher. What this does crafts and cr critiques sales copy. So let's go over to here. And I'm going to actually, I have sales copy pre-written. So improve my copy and make it better. We just click here. Actually, guys, we're going to always do this. I want to do this in the sandbox mode. As a developer here, they don't burn through my tokens. So we're going to take uh, my sales copy that I have for Groove Agency VSL. <laughs> and it's going to critique my own sales copy. And I've done this before. It tells me that I'm overly negative. I'm overly negative. I'm pretty sure it's going to say that. Let's take a look 
and see what, what I actually wrote here. And so this is the sales copy. There's some, one single reason why your online business is failing and why your funnels aren't converting. And it's not you. It's your execution. It's severely lacking. But don't take it personally. It's not your fault. So if your website just won't convert no matter what you do, and if every funnel you craft ends up costing you money, and if your affiliates, blah, 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 and if you're frustrated, and if you're exhausted, it's time to stop being loot, blah, 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 blah. That's my sales copy that I wrote. And if we click, click here, it's going to analyze my sales copy and give me a critique and then tell me how it can write each section better. Short copy, an email, anything. <laughs> All right. So length and complexity. Here's a critique. The copy is extremely lengthy and complex, which can overwhelm a potential customers. A more concise and focused approach would be more effective. Negative tone. The beginning of the copy focuses heavily on failure and frustration. While this can create a sense of urgency, it risks alienating the reader of being too negative. I don't know about you guys. I have to agree with this. I felt that way after I looked at it because I don't like when somebody makes assumptions about my business. I sometimes go, who do you think? I'm, I'm not suffering that bad. Like, why are you beating up on me? So critiques are, are very good. And then I can go back and I can adjust it. While the copy mentions various services, it doesn't clearly articulate the, the specific benefits to the customer, overuse of technical jargon, and repetitive call to action. I just maybe just went over it too much. So it will help me go over each section and write the copy better. And it's still writing right here. And it's basically telling me how I can do better. And I can say, how about this section? How about this section? So I've got even better ones that I'm even more excited about. Let's look at this one. Uh, Headline Hero Pro, you get it. Um, let me show you what I do behind here, behind the scenes. I tell it to use – this is how I basically – I said I want an alert bar, a pre-headline, a headline, a sub-headline, a snippet, or a blurb. And then these are the frameworks that I want to use, the how-to get desired outcome. So it creates some really, really good headlines, folks, really cool headlines. Sales copy cloner. Pay attention, everybody. This is one of the best ones. I know some of you sometimes are multitasking and you're working. Stop what you're doing. Pay attention to the screen. Biggest game changer of all you're about to see. Let's create a scenario for you. Damn. Look at that email by Frank Kern. Oh, my God. He writes such good copy. I, I even try to use ChatGPT and Groove.ai. I can't seem to get copy like Frank. I wish I had copy like that. But I just wish it was writing about my business. Little fun fact. There's two words that we use in copywriting. Number one is called swipe. Why? Because we used to swipe other people's copy and insert our cop, our product and services. That's why we call them a swipe. It comes back from swipe files. When you looked at other people, you'd swipe it, put it into a swipe file, keep it in a folder and pull up other people's copy to get inspiration. Number two, literally the reason why it's called copy writing is because you would copy other effective things that worked and copy it and improve it and create controls and split tests. So swipe copy literally comes from swiping and copying. So sales copy cloner. Let's take a look at this copy written by John Carlton that I think is just friggin' killer. Now, at last, you can have the entire collection too. How to have the master collection of John Carlton's best ads at your fingertips. Now, I can break this down and be like, okay, how to have the best something of blah, 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 blah. Now, you have from, to, howdy, the ellipses, from now on, short sentences, et cetera, et cetera. Now, what I've done to make this demo go a little bit quicker is I've already made this copy right here. You see, it's called John Carlton Sales Copy. Here it is. Now it lasts, right? Howdy. So I have this. I've already copied and pasted into a document because I think it's friggin' great copy, and I want to write about Groove Agency for it. So watch what this GPT does. When I run... Sales co copy cloner. If you're not watching, you're missing. I'm just simply going to click. Uh, oops, let's do this and edit GPT. We're going to click guide me. The secret sauce behind here took me about a day and a half to master this, to get this right. So start by uploading the sample copy. All right, let's upload 
John Carlton sales copy, and I'm going to hit enter. Once you've uploaded the sales copy, I'll go to the next step. All right, so let's see what it's asking me for the next step. What do you think it's going to ask me about my brand intake form that I did once? I answered 30 questions. I took an hour to tell everything I could do about my business, and then I could repurpose this over and over with all of these different apps. So here we go. I simply upload the 30 questions about Groove Agency. And I hit go, and let's see what happens. Analyzing. Now, I can even click here and see what it's analyzing, right? It's it's literally like doing the programming in the back. All right, guys, now remember, what did John Carlton's copy say? John Carlton said, now at last, how to have this, right? And then from two, let's see what I'm getting over here. Now, at last, you can have the entire collection, too. How to have the master collection of Groove Agency's best tools at your fingertip, complete with Mike Fulsame's private back, background stories and insights into results. Uh, not the best. This is actually one of the worst that I've seen when I've done this demo. But from Mike Fulsame to you, howdy. For years now, let's see what John's was. For years now, people have been hounding me about my rumored collection of my most infamous, notorious, and sometimes legendary ads and direct mail letters. That includes, and supposedly blah, 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 for cheap. Let's see how this did it. For years, people have been struggling to learn uh, with learning technology for marketing, and it's been hindering their ability to sell their information products. That includes understanding how to integrate, integrate multiple platforms and the often shocking cost behind them. All available, blah, 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 for a fraction of the usual cost. His was for cheap, right? And so now his next headline, and I'm here to finally admit that's all true. And I'm here to finally reveal that it's all true. This collection of tools, blah, blah, blah. So it's rewritten the copy about Groove Agency. That, and it just continues and continues and continues and continues and continues. This is just absolutely killer for when you're, if you want to do an email, especially an email. If you see somebody wrote a long email, it just works really, really cool. Let's move on to the next GPT that you get with Groove.ai. And this is called, <coughs> excuse me, killer email copy. I'm going to skip that one and first go to snazzy looking copy because they're similar. The difference is killer email copy will rewrite it and make it better. Snazzy looking copy simply makes it snazzy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my inbox right now and let's look at Matt Lights. He's a good friend of mine. Let's see if we can beat him up here. All right, so here's Matt's copy, okay? So I'm going to use my snazzy email and I'm going to say to Matt Lights, you should be using my snazzy email copywriter. So I'm going to take a text edit document. I'm going to paste that email in here, right? So here's the email that Matt Lights wrote. I'm just going to save this as Matt Lights. Matt L, we'll just call it, just to make it quick. All right, so let's uh, pull this out over to here for a minute because we're going to put them side by side in just a second. And we're going to compare how his looks to this one. Let's jazz up my email or sales. This is, whoops, wrong one. Let's do, let's jazz up my email copy. All right. It's going to ask me for my email. So we have it right here in our downloads. There's Matt Lights. Now, snazzy email writer will not write a new word. It's going to make the ident, it's going to basically create the identical email, but it's going to snazzy up the email and it's going to make it better. Guys, when you do this, you are going to explode your engagement and you're going to explode completely explode your uh, your um, your engagement. People are going to want to read your emails. They're just going to look better. Now, this uh, is a short one, so it may not be the very, very best one to demo this, but let's just go ahead and do this anyway. So the first thing we need to do is we need help with Groove.ai. because we need to be able to paste this because when you paste it into a Google doc, it loses all of that stuff. So we're going to just paste that here and I've got this. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my Gmail.
and I'm going to write myself an email. We're going to paste that in there just like that. And I think it gave me a subject line as well. Let's just get this <coughs> and paste. And I'm going to send that to myself. And let's take a look at how this email looks compared to. So this, let's get rid of this. Oh, I've got a problem with my go-to webinar stuff here. So, all right. So let's put them side by side now. This is my email. And this is Matt's email. All right. So I'm just going to click side by side. So which email looks like you want to read it more? This one right here. And this, it's the same email you're going to see, right? So we're going to, this is his. Let's, let's actually put them like this. I think this will be a little bit better. That tip, this is mine. Right. And this is his. Let's take a look. Well, that's I don't have time to do more. I would do uh, sometimes I would look at people like Rich Sheffrin's, even John Benson's, who's a great copywriter. But the formatting is just gross. It's absolutely gross. And when you look at ours, it just makes it so much more readable. And I didn't actually when you do a long email, it really stands out a lot more. If I were to look into my inbox, guys, and. Let's just look at my inbox and see what people are mailing me today. Let's look at Zach. All right, that's a horrible email, just being honest. Just really, really hard to read. Let's look at Grant Cardone. Okay, Grant is, you can't you know, rewrite basically three lines. Let's look at... Uh, <coughs> David Fagan. That's actually not bad copy right there. He's doing a good job. Uh, let's take a look at Nick James. Nick's not too bad. He could. He's actually doing what you're supposed to do. So I'm not even going to beat him up and write it up better. He's doing a pretty good job. He's bolding his PSs. This is what most people aren't doing. Let's look at Chris Jones. Uh, he's doing more of like the template base, which I'm not really a fan of. Um, okay, here's somebody that could definitely use. Uh, re if we rewrote ours, th that one with this, it would be much better. Absolutely much better. But unfortunately, we don't have the time to demo all of that today. Uh, when I do a live stream, I do some really cool demos and get to show you all of that stuff. But we need to move on to the next GPT. And so let's uh, let's do that now. Let's go to killer email copy. This one's even better. Hey, Mike. Oh, before yes. you jump into this next GPT, could you just go over again, because a couple of people missed it when you talked about it, about why you're using GPT now, how long somebody will need to use GPT to use these until they get programmed into AI? Yeah, we're looking to get them programmed into Groove.ai you know, before the end of February. So the beautiful thing about this is that this has an interface that's easier for me to go and create a GPT and manage it uh, compared to the one over at OpenAI. At OpenAI, once it's done, we just go and we, we transpose everything that we did uh, in there. And then I'm uh, Artie's going to take all of these and he's going to put them into Groove.cm. So the beautiful thing is everybody already has a ChatGPT account. You do need a ChatGPT Plus account to get these to work. They, I have them here. They load here soon. Uh, if I open up... <coughs> Let's see in here. This I might have to go through a lot of these. Uh, I have my screen blown up so much. It's uh, tough here. But let me see <laughs> if you just bear with me. I'm going to actually show you what this is going to actually look like. This is it right here. I have a screenshot that shows, okay, this is it <laughs> right here. So the way it's going to work in the future is, can I close this for more room? All right. <coughs> so sorry. 
All right. When you're in Groove.ai, you're going to see apps here and they're going to load just like this. But inside of your projects, if you're in a project right here, we're going to be adding a new icon that's going to toggle either these settings that you're seeing here or you're going to see something that's going to go to the GPTs. And then all of these GPTs that we have here. Just imagine something like this. All of the GPTs are going to be listed here like this. Okay. And they're just going to, you're going to see all of the GPTs. So you're going to be able to use either these settings with the act like and all this type of stuff, which is the traditional way, or you're going to click on a little thing and then instantly the apps are going to show up here. And then once the apps show up, you'll have your chat over here where your output is going to come out and your document editor is going to be here. So very, very soon, what I'm showing you that's happening currently that I've designed these to work with chat GPT and only people uh, that have, let me just close this, uh, go back to here. Sorry about that, guys. Only people that have access to uh, Groove.ai when they log in can see these. And yes, they open up in at over at your chat GPT account. So that means you can use them and get all the benefits from them, but they're going to be stripped out from chat GPT and made native and they'll be native only to Groove.ai very soon. All right. <clears throat> all right. So let's go to, um, we were talking about killer email copy. So killer email copy, the way that this works is a little bit different. What this does is it takes email that is written. So let's go to my inbox and let's, uh, let's just take a look at, um, Matt, Matt's email again. And so this is the email that he wrote, but this time we're going to actually write it better. Uh, okay. So make this email 10 times better. So it's actually going to rewrite the copy and format it. So when you, any email that you write, you want to spin through this spin cycle of, uh, killer email copy. So we're going to take the email and now it's going to use all of the principles of direct response in email and make sure nothing was left out. <clears throat> and then it's going to write it and it's going to format it better. So now we get, so his subject line was need a tax write off. Here you go. This one says the subject line should be. Act now to slash your tax bill and revolutionize your business with AI limited time. That is a much better headline. It gives me a preview snippet and then it writes this email right here. <laughs> and so I'm going to write that to myself. Whoops. That's why we've got to use. See, thank God for Groove.ai's document editor. It allows us to copy and paste and retain that that formatting. Without it, we'd be we'd be dead. <clears throat> so this should be normal, right? Okay. All right. So there we go. I'm gonna get the subject line that it told me to use with the little icon. I'm gonna send that to myself. And I just got a new email. All right. So here's my email. And if I was using group mail, it would put it into a container uh, where it wouldn't fully wrap all the way to the edge of the screen. So here's my email. <coughs> and let's just pull that out like that. And let's move that here. So that's my email. And let's go to Matt's email. Okay. So. Matt's email looks like this, okay? <laughs> and we re rewrote it to look like this. So, hey there. And so it's just, now look, it may be an overuse on emojis. We can tell it to use emojis or not. I had a plan to use emojis. Uh, this went a little nuts with the emojis. You could just, you know, take them out if you don't want. He has a couple of emojis in here, one, one or two, right? Uh, hours uh, went a little emoji happy. You could get rid of some of them. I like the clocks ticking, you know, but uh, went a little nuts on the emojis. But the bottom line is 
Uh, if you're anything like me, you're scouting every corner for the last minute. His is 2023 is about to close while it's not fine. This is just, guys, this is just much better emails. So imagine what starts happening when your emails look better. They have better engagement. They have better copywriting um, and you get better subject lines. You're going to just engage better with your customers instead of just getting bored with your emails. They're going to be looking forward. Every time they see you in the inbox, they're going to get excited. So that is killer email copy. We have a few more to go. So let's jump on in, make this a little bit bigger and get back to um, <clears throat> better bullets. This is really good because the hardest thing to do when writing sales copy is writing bullets. All right. So I've created a bullet uh, maker that will uh, write bullets for you, either um, for email, um, sales copy or rich, really rich copy to be used with video sales letters and webinars where you really want to take time and sell the benefit. What I just did was a bullet and you saw me really dig deep. So I'm going to say transform my copy into marketing bullets. <coughs> so I wrote the copy, but I really don't have good good bullets. So I want either neat, concise, one-liner, good for email, powerful bullets, or rich copy bullets. I'm going to go with three. So let's go. Ah, I've reached my limit. So let's just see if I can continue here, if that if it's going to block me again. Oh, wow. This is the first time that I've ever been blocked uh, from here. Um, let's see if that's going to happen right here as well. If not, I will describe all of these for you. Yep. And it is literally blocking me for one hour. So what this one would do, uh, folks, is it would it would take my copy and then write really, really good bullets for me. Moving on, we have Webinar Slides Outline Wizard. This one is absolutely amazing because what this one does, if you actually look at the way that I trained it, you will see that I've trained it on my course, Webinar Control Slides Transcript and the Slides Part one. So I've literally uploaded the PDF of the slides. And then I took a two hour training that I did explaining how to do a webinar. And I uploaded that training in here as knowledge. So when you click help me to generate a killer webinar, you will simply, um, uh, it, uh, just upload information about your product and it'll write the, the webinar slide by slide by slide for you based on my course. So you'll never have to get Fear about writing a webinar, you will literally, literally write every slide and every copy for you. And then it can even write the verbiage if you ask. It'll write that for you. Webinar replay bullet maker. Let me show you a, com a conversation I had with Donathan Gamble and Jason Calori. So here's a conversation that we had with them. Uh, and you will see here. that when it was all said and done, they gave me the replay page. And I said, hey, guys, can you do me a favor? Can you put that replay on YouTube? I'm going to use YouTube transcript to get the bullets. And then basically what I did is I went to Webinar Bullet Maker, and then I simply uploaded the transcript of the YouTube video that I put into a text file. And then when it was all said and done, I said it's going to increase conversions. And he says, sure, here's the video. I said, okay, great. And then when I was all said and done, these are the bullets that it came out with. And it timestamped them. What happens at three minutes, et cetera. And I said, guys, put this underneath the video rather than just a replay video with a, a buy now button. Put this all underneath the video. This will double conversions on any webinar. You're going to see me do it for this webinar and you're going to see this underneath the replay page. So I gave them this document and they said to me, great, it's on the page now. And if this page is still live, you're going to see, hopefully they didn't take it down. <coughs> they may have. Let me refresh that again. <coughs> Or is their entire website down? Let's see. It was just up the other day. Oh, their entire website is down, guys. So that's not on me. That is not on me. I cannot get their website to load, uh, which is a shame. I wanted to show you that this was in action. But you can see we also did it even at Groove.ai. 
uh, over here. Oh my God, am I offline? Is it me? You're still on the webinar if you're worried about that. Yeah. All right. So I think you're just a little slow right now, but you're still streaming. So. All right, which is crazy because I cannot get a single website to load. Uh, Just bear with me a minute. Mike, can you get the internet to load? Any website? CNN just came up slow. Okay, finally. All right, so we're back, it looks like. All right, well. Something, something we were down for a minute over here in the studio, and somehow we kept the connection with you guys, which is great. So I got scared. I, I, I was looking for text messages from Donna that, hey, you've been gone for the last nine minutes. All right. So now you can see this was the webinar, and these timestamps were put here. It did so well on the replay that if I go to Skype and I type in Jason Kalori, you're going to see here that he said to me, Your replay bullets maker GPT is super useful. I've used it a few times now. Said, glad you like it. I have 30 more. Give me your email. I'll share them with you. So that is the uh, the webinar replay bullet maker. It'll write bullets for uh, basically what you do is you upload your webinar to YouTube, wait about an hour. But for every minute in the web uh, in the video, that's how long it takes for Google to transcribe it. Once, you, if it's an hour webinar, it'll take an hour for the transcription. You take the YouTube URL, you go to youtubetranscript.com, you paste the URL of your uh, of your webinar, it'll transcribe it, you then save that to a text file and upload it to this GPT. For advertising, we have Facebook Ads Pro. This will write all of your Facebook ads and designs and sales copy and give you Dolly images, Dolly 3 images that or descriptions that you could use for your ads. YouTube Ads Pro, this creates your YouTube video uh uh, advertising video scripts, paperclip, PPC, Google AdWords, ads, Wiz- Wiz- Wizard Pro. This will create your YouTube. Ad- um, oh, this was a bad copy. Um, this will do all of your, I got to fix, th- my team messed that up. That, that basically writes all of your paperclip ads. Better blog post. Man, I wish I could show you this. You take any blog that you or your team has written, spin it through better blog post. And then it'll ask you what keywords you want to optimize for. It'll rewrite the blog post and also format it better with H1, H2 tags and really light up your SEO. Um, SEO keyword wizard. This will, uh, you will upload information about your business and will export a document that looks something like this. So I should have something here called keywords. So it creates all of your keywords for you, which then get used for your blogging and your pay-per-click. You'll need this to run the pay-per-click. It'll, it'll say, hey, I need keywords. And this tool does that for you. Storyboard Artist is one of my favorite ones. I really wish I could demo this for you. Basically, what you do, guys, is you upload your VSL. You simply click upload your VSL. And it, uh, once you do that, it will then basically uh, break down your VSL into scenes. And then it will create images with Dolly 3 and create images for every scene of your VSL. So that is just absolutely insane. I think I might, 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 might have something for you. <laughs> All right. So this is basically what it does is it finds this where you say this word and you end with this. And you remember my VSL is there's one single reason why your online business is failing. And then it creates the Dolly 3 prompt for you and then the image. So here's images that can, that, that you use for your VSL and you just, uh, insert it over the, in your timeline when you say these different things. So this was me going through my entire, uh, VSL. And as you can see, they said it was negative and you could tell just by the images that it was negative, right? So, um, but that was the beginning of the VSL and it's basically, and now it goes into the next section, the next section, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So this will automatically create all of the images for you. Image Cloner and Reimaginer. This GPT will take any image that you don't have the rights to and create a near replica for you, but you can also change it. If there's two men, you could say make it a man and a woman or two women, um, or you can also change the style to anime, Pixar, or, or uh, uh, doodle style animation, anything. Pixar Me is really cool. I use this all the time. It's just fun, um, but I use that for this. 
I can take any image uh, like this one here and you upload it and it will Pixar the image for you. I love that one. It's one of my favorite ones. I send Donna Pixar's of me and her and her and Michelle all the time. Viral video assistant. I have a call tomorrow with Simon on the team to use this because if you take a look at our YouTube channel, right? Because we're, we're busy just like you. AI is really helping. So if you go to groove.cm official, even like this video that, you know, for all of our live streams, what ends up happening is all of our videos that in the past are titled groove.ai training, uh, groove Q&A session, groove AI. There's nothing here that, you know, really make you look, Michael Sames day two. There's nothing here. And I wish I could demo this for you because basically what, what happens with this is you take the video, put it into YouTube transcript, get the text, and then you upload it to this GPT. And what this GPT will do will analyze your entire video and it'll come up with a title that will work with the YouTube algorithm that is catchy and will get clicks nearing clickbait, but not clickbait as effective as clickbait, but it's, it's enticing. It will write your description, your keywords, and tell you what your thumbnail should be when you design it in Canva. Killer. Killer, 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 killer. This will really explode your YouTube channel. Viral Clip Maker, there are tools that do this, but this will basically upload your script and tell you where you can clip this into shorts and clips. So if you have a three-hour podcast, it'll tell you, hey, here's some videos you might want to edit out and some shorts, and it tells you where to find them. Newspot Assistance is again, I wish I could demo this for you. You simply say, help me find talking points for my podcast. And it'll say, what niche are you in? And it'll search Bing and then come up with uh, websites, URLs, why it picked it, why it thinks it's a good topic for your pod podcast. Prompt enhancer, a little more old school, but you can put in any born prompt and it'll create a better prompt for you. And then these are tools that are that some of these tools tell you that you need to run first. Uh, this is called... Shark Tank. This will write your pitch for Shark Tank. It's a real nice little fun one. We have uh, this one here. This is called uh, Elevator Pitch. So this will write your elevator pitch for you. Um, and this will ask you, who is it for? A JV partner, an investor, or um, a customer? This one here, this is called Vision Statement. And mission statement, this one will help you craft your vision statement and your mission statement for your company. And this is one of my favorite ones right here. We just haven't added them to, uh, to Groove.ai yet. This is writing style analyzer. And this allows you to um, analyze your writing style for tone style traits that you can then move over to Groove.ai as a setting. So you will always write like you because you're not in the drop downs. So uh, I believe those are all of the new ones that we have. Let me just see. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. These are the 36 different apps that we have for you currently available for you inside of Groove.ai. If you're a member, you have access. You're able to now do projects with all the new enhancements and features that just completely blow away ChatGPT. You can share. You can uh, collaborate with other people. Um, these system prompts are built in.